some interesting facts and knowledge. First, we will welcome uh, our dear guests and our dear doctors. Uh, we hope to spend a, light, not a nice journey with us today. Um, as I present, our presentation today is about sonochemistry. First, we'll talk a little bit about the history of sonochemistry, and then we'll go through its mechanism, and we'll mention a little of its applications, and we will end with the conclusions. Let's entertain your mind with some interesting questions. Do you think that there is any kind of relationship between sound and chemistry? How can sound be source of light? Have you ever been thinking how shrimps can catch the place? Would you think that a bubble can destroy cancer cells, um, clean metals, or even create nanoparticles? Invisible is the key to understand the visible. Do you find it logical? In the late 18s, the Royal Navy com commissioned rolled relay to investigate the reason why a high-speed torpedo was not functioning well. They also discovered that erosions formed on the propeller. What's the reason of this? Actually, rolled relay, after researches and work, discovered the reason and revealed the mystery. He said that the, the cause of this erosion was from bubble. Not, not this type of bubble. Of course, things are a little bit complicated than this. Actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a totally new field in chemistry. It's called solo chemistry. From the name, it's clear that it studies the, the application of ultrasonic waves from solo and chemistry. Ultrasonic wave is a sound wave. It's, uh, it's a frequency ranges from 20 kilohertz to 10,000 kilohertz. As a usual sound wave, it consists of compressions and rarefactions. In compressions, the pressure is very, very high. But in the phase of rarefaction, the pressure decreases sharply and is very low. This, okay, how can this be applied in solar chemistry? What is the relationship between this and between solar chemistry? Actually, there is no direct relation between ultrasonic waves and chemistry. But what happens is ultrasonic waves create a bubble. These bubbles, these bubbles do the whole work. What happens is the variation of pressure that, that's created by ultrasonic waves breaks the bonds between water molecules, which creates a cavity. Okay. Immediately after the formation, the cavity, nothing in it. The pressure inside the cavity is zero. It's vacuum. But due to the pressure difference between the cavity and the liquid outside it, some water vapor molecules get into this cavity, which makes it resist the, 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 the collapse immediately after its formation. This video This video illustrates the formation. Illustrate the formation, growth, and collapse of ultrasonic waves of, of bubbles. And it's, and it's created by a pressure difference carried on this bottom. Okay, so we are talking about the mechanism of formation of cavitation. We talked about the first point, which is the formation. Now we'll talk about the growth of the bubble. What we have now in hand is a bubble with uh, water vapor particles in it. Now this bubble will grow. How will this happen? During times of cycles where the pressure is very low, during the, which we call the rarefaction, the pressure is very low, the, the bubble increases in size, and more water vapor particles gets inside. Then, the, the, the com in the compression cycle, the, pressure, the exterior pressure increases. So the bubble can no more increase in size. And actually, it decreased a little bit. And during the rarefaction cycle, the bubble again increased in size. And these cycles keep on going until we reach a point where the molecules, the, the intermolecular forces, can no more resist the difference in pressure and 
it collapses. Now the collapse of the, of the particles is what makes the uniqueness of sonochemistry because it's accompanied with two things. First, jet liquids. Jet liquids are very, are very high speed water vapor particles diffusing in the liquid. This speed can, can cause damages in metals, it can destroy. Um, it, it's very huge speed. The second thing that is generated with the bubbles, with the collapse of the bubbles, is shock waves. Shock waves is what's generated when the source of the sound has a higher speed than the sound itself. The collapse of the bubble happens at a speed higher than the speed of the sound. This creates shock waves, and the shock waves help disperse the jet particles in the water. And with the same mechanism, you can understand why you hear this tremendous sound when a supersonic plane is passing nearby. This is because the speed of the supersonic plane is higher than the speed of the sound. This creates a shock wave. And this is why you hear this enormous sound when a plane is not passing nearby. Now, let's have some fun and let's illustrate the whole, the whole this mechanism by a simple experiment. Um, this balloon, we will imagine, we will, this is when the exterior pressure is low. This gives the chance for the bubble to increase. Then when the exterior pressure is very high, this compresses the bubbles and water particles start to get outside and, and, and it, decre it decreases a little bit in size. And then cycle still goes on. Until we reach a point, until we reach a point where the intermolecular force can no more stand this change in pressure, and finally, the bubble collapse. This collapse of the bubble creates very high conditions, extreme conditions, which we'll learn about with Zina. Actually, the energy that is created by this very, very small bubble is incredible. It, it generates temperature reaches 5,000 Kelvin. It's very, very close to the temperature of the surface of the sun. And it's higher than the, the melting point of all metals. But not only this, it also creates very, very high pressure. It's more than 1,000 atmospheric pressure. Can you imagine it? What does it mean? It means that you are putting a very large tank on your hand. Or you are putting an Eiffel Tower on a plate with 15 centimeter radius. Definitely, we have to, me to make use of the, this huge energy. And of course, the engineers already exploited these conditions in first cleaning metals. Uh, this video illustrates the cleaning metals. Here we have a layer of gold that's, that's being cleaned with a source of ultrasound waves that creates shock waves and jets and which wipe out this layer of gold which cleans the metal. This gives us an idea to increase the efficiency of catalysts. Because one of the main problems that face the catalyst is the accumulation of reactants on its surface, which decreases its efficiency. We can use ultrasound waves to uh, continually cl clean the catalyst and increase the surface that is exposed to reactants and thus increase the efficiency of reactants. Another very important application is application of this technique in synthesis of nanoparticles. What makes this technique especially different is that it, 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 um, it's rapid can be controlled and simple. In addition, finally, it gives us nanoparticles with uniform shape and high purity that can be used widely in nanoengineering. All these applications are interesting, but, but still, Mother Nature masters the art first. While we searched for applications for, nano, for sonochemistry, we discovered that this technique is used by an, a marine animal under the water. They use this technique to, to attack its prey. This is the shim. The shim uh, creates a perturbation in the water with his claws, and this creates bubbles. When these bubbles collapse, it creates uh, 5,000 Kelvin and 1,000 ATM, which of course stun its prey and make it easier for him to attack. It. Let's watch this video. Oh, that's a sonic wave. First, its claw is cocked like a pistol. <laughs> then fine. The effect is literally stunning. As the claw snaps shut, 
It fires a blast of bubbles. Incredibly, as the bubbles collapse, they momentarily reach the temperature of the sun. This implosion causes a shockwave that stuns. Thank you. 